So I feel like the discussion around marriage and what are men to do in the modern dating and marriage scene has kind of reached a fever pitch, especially with the interview that um, Michael Knowles did with Pearl off Just Proby Things. And I've been listening to a lot of Coach Greg Adams lately. Because um, when I listen to him, I feel like I'm going behind enemy lines and I'm just like hearing like locker room talk almost. Because um, his platform is directed to men to actually, you know, dissuade them from getting married. And so he's giving all these stats and these stories and um, he's just talking to men about how, you know, marriage is um, a trap. <laughs> it is not in your favor. You should just stay away from it. And even though I don't agree with that, um, I do understand why he says that, why Pearl says the things that she does. And, you know, I get it. You know, I, I really understand why men are feeling the way they're feeling. And a lot of men who would, under normal circumstances, want to be in relationships and want to get married, they're they're backing away and they're saying, it's not worth it, I, I can't take that risk. But, you know, if you know me, then you know that I come from the perspective of fundamental Christianity. And so not getting married is really just not an option for, you know, people who think like me, people who believe what I believe, because getting married is a command. You know, the Bible tells us to um, be fruitful and multiply, and it also says that we are not to have sex before marriage. And so if we're to be fruitful and multiply, we need to get married. But, you know, as a man, you know, how can he make a wise decision and move in the right direction and move in the right way to mitigate? Because there will never be a, a, any way that you can completely 100% um, get rid of all the chances of divorce. But how can a man move wisely and mitigate his chances? And I've heard a lot of different things from different people. Um, but I think what it really comes down to at the end of the day is that the individuals because men still do leave even if it is a higher rate of women leaving you know regardless the two parties involved in the marriage they have to have this shared viewpoint of i fear my higher power more than i am in love with you and so of course i'm a christian so i'm coming from the perspective of i fear god more than i love my husband but you know if you're a part of any fake religion <laughs> then, you know, if you fear that God more than you love your spouse, then the chances of your um, marriage ending um, nosedive astronomically. Because my marriage anniversary is coming up very soon um, this week. And so um, my husband and I, we've had hard times. And I understand why people get divorced. I understand that marriage is, is hard. You know, you're married every single day. You know, it's not something that you pick up and you put down and you pick up and you put down. It, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so, um, you know, I've had friends talk to me about, you know, how I stay married and even though my husband and I have our problems. And I've told them, and I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, I would never cheat on my husband. I would never leave my husband because I am scared to death of what God would do to me. Because it doesn't matter. You know, you have to get this idea of your, out of your head of, you know, they did this and they did that and they're in the wrong. Because at the end of the day, you are the one who made the vow. You are the one who said you would be with this person until death do you part, for better or for worse. And so what they do is between them and God, but what you do is between you and God. And so if you as someone who wants to get married, predominantly men, because men are the ones who um, stand to lose more and are more likely to be the ones who are um, left holding the bag you know, when the marriage ends, um, you know, it's so crucially important that you find someone, that you find a wife who fears God more than she loves you. And so, because you know, tough times will come, it doesn't matter how compatible you are and how much you guys like each other at first and how well you get along, because feelings change, people change, times change. And I'm sure we've all heard about people who seem like they were just so madly in love at one point and they got along great. And then as the years piled on, they started to just drift apart. They started to grow apart. And that happens, you know, people people become different people. You know, whether you get married in your early 20s or you get married in your late 40s, people change. And so people can want different things, people can go in different directions. But at the end of the day, if they fear a higher power, if they fear um, retribution from outside sources, because that's another thing too, is that we're living in a society that thinks that divorce is okay. And so not only do people, you know, like if they're if you're if it, if your spouse wants to divorce you, she sure doesn't care about what you feel like. She sure doesn't care about you know what you think, because she's mad at you. So she doesn't care about what you think. You know her love for you has gone out the door, 
And then she's also not getting judged or penalized by society because people will tell her, oh, girl, you know, you had to look out for you first. And then if she doesn't fear God, then what is holding her to that marriage? I mean, of course we're going to have a divorce rate that's this high. Um, but, you know, we can't change society. We can't make people judge each other for getting divorced like we should, like there used to be. Um, and then, you know, you can't change how she's going to feel about you, you know, feelings ebb and flow. But what you can do is you can find a woman who fears God. And if you vet her properly, then there's a very good chance that that is not going to diminish. Um, especially if she's someone who, you know, reads her Bible and she knows what the Bible says about divorce and how God hates divorce. Um, then you have a really strong chance of staying with someone and ending up with someone who is not just going to leave you after 10 years so she can take half your stuff.